Welcome to basic programming, where we're just going to do some basic programming. So we're going to just go into some basics of programming, and it's just going to take a quick 20 minutes. Some programming that will be used during the ergo script programming coding. And I'll, I'll give a very layman explanation of what programming is. So um, if, you're very, like, if you're very, very new to programming, it can be kind of scary to, to look at programming as it is because it, it does seem like a foreign language and a foreign object of some sort. <clears throat> but if you, if you, you can compare it in a way to human beings. That's what I like to say. Like, and the reason why I say this is because I'm going to go into a little bit about the different primitive value and uh, the different things that the different things that exist within programming. <clears throat> and first, I'll give you a frame frame of reference to compare. So, if you think about a human being. You see a person with hands and head, a head, a mouth, and eyes, blah, blah, blah. So there's a bunch of things that made up a human. If a human have all of this, then the human. If like if it's uh if a smaller size and the mouth is like bigger, uh longer and uh they have flappy ears, then it's a dog, something along that line. So different different things cons uh made up make up a person. And if you go deeper and deeper, you can go to the tissue, organs, and then you go down to cell, and then you go all the way down to proton, neutron, and electrons. And proton, neutron, electrons are the basic building blocks of the entire physical world. So when you look at programming, what you want to think about programming and the basic building blocks is zeros and ones. <coughs> And that's how programming works. Like on, at, at a really high level, you look at programming, you look at all these languages that say a, a bunch of things, but all of these words that you write eventually gets compiled into zero and ones. And if you think about neutrons and protons and electrons and the, a level higher, which is the elements, you can see that for programming, the zero and ones, a level higher would be a byte. And a byte is basically eight bits of data, which is eight zero and ones bring together. So for example, like zero, 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 one is, is equals to the value of one in binary. <laughs> if it's Zero 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 one one, then it's three. So <clears throat> we count in the power of two when it comes to bits and bytes, and that's the next level of the building block. <clears throat> and as we go higher and higher, you get different values, different primitive type, and all of this you can see it as as like um, a form of like, for example, a tissue or organ, and you just bring it higher and higher. So with that being said, let's go into the basics of programming. Uh, let's start talking about primi primitive values. So when it comes to programming, what you're, gonna, what, what you're trying to build is to write a language that allows the computer to understand what to do for whatever reason or for whatever happens. So, in a way, what you're trying to do is speak to the computer and asking the computer to carry out certain tasks for you. And for what the programming, uh, what the computer knows are all this byte language, all these building blocks. And as we abstract higher and higher, we get into values that are more concrete, that is more understandable by humans. At the end of the day, Computers only understand zero and ones. <clears throat> so let's bring it back, bring it up to like values. A few values that we have, or let's call it data types, is <clears throat> a byte, <clears throat> a 
an integer, <clears throat> a boolean, and a string. So when you think about byte, it's exact is the eight bit, which is a bunch of zeros and ones, <clears throat> and it it goes from negative one to eight to one to eight, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember the details, but basically, it goes from a certain value to to another. It, it, it basically extends a range. And if you think about ASCII numbers, ASCII, -I -I, ASCII values, <clears throat> it basically is values that is in between the range in it. And it, it makes up the characters like A, B, C, D, E, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like all these characters, it all points to one of them. <clears throat> and those characters can be called a car or a character. So whenever you see a string or like a, a word in computer language, when you type, what, you do, what you're doing is essentially string a bunch of characters together or a bunch of bytes together, and it becomes what it is. So for example, let's say, hello world. Each of this character results in a byte value. Even the space. So <clears throat> that is byte and string. And then if we go into integers, what we're going, uh, what integers are, are basically numbers, which is understandable by humans. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, blah blah blah. <clears throat> and what in integer essentially is is for example, this would be zero, 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 blah, dot, 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 zero, zero. <laughs> and this would be zero, zero, dot, 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 zero, one. <laughs> and it carries on. So everything gets translated into bytes. So after discussing about integers, one thing that you see a lot in Scala is long. And long is essentially just a really, really big integer, <coughs> which I do not have the value on the at the top of my head. But it's a really, really, really it's a it's a huge it's a big integer, a really, really big one. Uh, cheesy. If you do you know the value to it. Cheesy. Oh, sorry, my mic was muted. I did not realize. Um, I don't know the value off the top of my head, but I'm looking at, looking it up right now, I'm trying to see. Okay. It's huge. <laughs> it's pretty huge. Two That's to the six so three minus huge. one is what it is. Okay. So the next thing we're going to go into is booleans. And booleans are essentially the, just zero or one. Zero meaning false, one meaning true. So it basically means what it means. If, for example, is George, George's name George, true. Is George's name William, false. Like literally zero or one. <clears throat> and zero meanings, meaning false, one meaning true. So, when it comes to ergo script, which we will go into later, we'll be using a lot of the booleans, integer, <coughs> not integer, longs, and bytes. But before we go, we go in there. We are going. We will go into some if else. <coughs> so, let's go into if else statements. And if else statement is basically what it is. Um, it's logic where you say if this, if this is true, 
run this. If if not, run something else. <clears throat> For example, if let's say we have a variable called jaw. <clears throat> If jaw dot equals Hmm. No, that's only two bad. So else it So if you look at this statement, you can see that there's if, else if, and else. And what it basically says is that if this variable, George, is equals to G, is spelled as G-E-O-R-G-E, -E, then you say, hello, George. You ask the computer to print, hello, George. <clears throat> if George is equals to William, which I can, at the start of the program, I can just change this to William. It will say, print wrong name. And else, because I left it empty, <clears throat> it will just not do anything. So if, else if, else is basically, think of it as logic and you telling the computer to say, if this happens, do this. If that, else if, which would be, which would have to be right after an if, Else if cannot exist by itself, but if, else if something happened, else if this logic is right, <clears throat> this statement is true, run this. Else, which is if all statements are false, run this. So that's the basics of else, if, else, if, and else. Before I go on, any question? Um, <clears throat> So pretty straightforward. Um, you you've used variables, which is primitive primitive values. You've used um, we've went into if else statements. Let's go into lists or collection. <laughs> well, I have one question. The value George yes. you defined in the first line, how does it know mm -hmm. it's a string? Can it be any other type? <clears throat> so for a string, if you put if you put this this right here, it automatically translates it to a string by the programming language. Okay. It's it's universal right now. So like <clears throat> if you code an a very low level language, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know it's a string. But a lot of the programming language right now is very abstract, where like for example, Scala, or Java, or whatever, uh, C Sharp, like a higher level programming language, they automatically abstract it to a string. So you don't need to worry. Once you put it in between these two, <clears throat> the, the, the language itself knows that it's gonna be a string. And therefore, it just compiles it as a string, which is a, a string of characters, and let the computer know, like, hey, this is the string of computer. <clears throat> this is a string of this is a string of characters. And like, 
even though it's a string, the computer actually don't understand that it's a string. The only thing the computer understands is zeros and ones. And the only reason why they understand it's a string is because the programming language translated to a string. It's like the programming language is the language between you and the computer that allows you guys to communicate. <clears throat> and what if sense? you define a variable without setting it? If you just say val George. So that wait. Oh, if I say okay, let me just put the screen here. So if I say val George. <clears throat> So it depends on the language. Some language allows you to have a a how do you call it? a, a non-reference variable. So, for example, if you go into JavaScript, JavaScript, if you put they don't use val, but let's say they use var, dot, and if you don't put anything. It just basically means now, which means nothing, which means it's a zero. <clears throat> but it depends on the programming language. For example, if you put it in Scala, you, you put it like this, the programming language of Scala itself will start screaming at you and say, no, this is not allowed. Like, Screw off, you can't do this, you gotta change it. Then you're forced to change it to something else, which hopefully be the value that you want, which you can type it and say string. <laughs> so. Does that make sense? Okay. So technically, technically you can not Define it depending on the programming language. Hmm. And if you see me putting this here, um, what I'm doing is essentially typing. That's what they call typing, which basically you define the type of the variable. <clears throat> so when so in programming, we there's two two. That's three essentially in Scala, which is var, val, and def. So since we're here, I'm just gonna go into this three first. In in Scala, a value, which is val, can only be defined once and it's not mutable, meaning you can't change the value. If you say it's one. If you say val George, George equals to G E O R G E, then this this value will always be George, and it cannot be changed. If you say var, V A R, let's let's put William, <laughs> and I put Will at first. Because I use a var, which is a variable, meaning that it varies, you can think of it like it can vary, then later on I can say William equals William. And it wouldn't shout at you. The computer wouldn't say like, oh, this is a value, blah, 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 because it's not a value, it's a variable, so you can change it. <clears throat> Whereas a value right here, <clears throat> You cannot change it once you define it. And lastly, def is what we use to define a function, or you can say define. So a function basically runs a number of steps to do something. For example, I can say def print name. equals you put it between blocks and then i say print <clears throat> my oh wait let me just put this here okay.
Oh, I can see it like this. Can you move over your screen again? Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you. So we are, we are in this block. <coughs> so if you put print line name, and then you call this function, which I can call it by saying print name jaw, which was defined earlier right here. It would the the system. Let's say this is the console. The console is basically a window that it will say. God. Well, without this too, but I'm just making it clear. So it will just print out George. So basically, def or define is you define a function to carry out a certain number of steps so that it runs that steps whenever you call that function. <laughs> Good. You don't need to put any variables or how does it know the name is a variable in the function? Okay, or a good question. Very good question. <clears throat> so this, when it's defined here, what we call, we call it an argument. Meaning that this, this print name, so when you see this print name, no. Oh, let me move the screen. Oh. Uh. <clears throat> so when you see print name equals <clears throat> this bracket, what we call anything within this bracket, we call it within this scope, meaning your, your view. And anything that happens within this bracket happens only in this bracket in a way where it, it will take everything from this bracket first, and then it will take things from outside the bracket if, if it's visible, if you allow the stuff from outside the bracket to be visible in a way from different classes. Like it gets a little bit messy, but <clears throat> basically within this scope, this right here, between this, between this bracket, this thing, uh, using brackets can get a little bit confusing, but within this, this thing is what we call an argument. And when you call name within this scope, with, when you call name within this scope, it always refer to the argument. And that's why when you put print name George, you are putting the value in as an argument. You put a value in as an argument and therefore when the program, it will go in, it will, once you call this, once you call this, it will go into print name and then it will carry out the first line, the second line, let's say the second line is print name, print line, and then it will say print line name, which refers to this name, this argument, which refers to this variable. And therefore it prints job. Does that make sense? Sort of like a function in math where uh, yes. you can kind of just plug in a parameter and then something comes out. Exactly. That being said, we only have four minutes left. I'll just quickly go through what a collection is, which is used a lot in ErgoScript. Um, a collection is essentially, you can see it like a basket or a, a to-do list or whatever. And basically a collection can have a collection of types. So for example, collection, of long collection of bytes, 
collection of basically anything actually. Bring and what essen what it essentially is is that like it's a a list basically. So let's say we have collection three, four, five, seven, eight. In a way, you can view it as data being put in a list or in a bucket that looks like this, and then you can access any of the value depending on the position. And we always start, start with zero. So if I say this is a number collection and I call number collection zero, it will return the value of three. Sense? That being said, we only have two minutes. Let's meet at the classroom. I hope this is helpful for everyone. See you guys at the classroom.